Minawakas and Shakas, it's me, Pu'ukani of Pipeline Paradise Radio, reporting for IslandSportsMedia.com, your ultimate island-style sports magazine. Two of the nation's most prolific offenses collided this past weekend as the 4-2 University of Hawaii Warrior football team hosted the undefeated and 19th-ranked Nevada Wolf Pack. Hawaii entered the game with a three-game winning streak after a convincing 49-27 victory at Fresno State last Saturday. Over 42,000 fans packed it versus the pack at the Aloha Stadium, ready to root on their home team. On a night where offense fireworks were expected, it was the efforts of the defense that stood out. Both teams failed to score on their opening drive, and on Nevada's second possession, Hawaii linebacker Corey Paredes stepped up the pressure and forced Nevada quarterback Colin Kaepernick to fumble the ball, recovered by cornerback Jeremy Bryant. Three plays later, quarterback Bryant Moniz hooked up with slot receiver Kealoha Pilaris for the six-yard touchdown. Hawaii 7, Nevada 0. Hawaii's defense forced another three and out for Nevada, then did a Hana hole, with Moniz connecting with Pilaris again for the TD, this time from 16 yards out. At the end of the first, it was Hawaii 14, Nevada 0. Second quarter action, Hawaii's defense continued their dominance, denying Nevada on a fourth and six pass. That led to a Scott Eno's 24-yard field goal. Both teams then gave up turnovers. A fumble by Hawaii's running back Cheesy Demude followed by an interception by safety Richard Torres. At the end of the first half, it was Hawaii 17, Nevada 0. In the second half, the Wolfpack made their adjustments and came out strong behind the running efforts of senior running back Vai Taua. Nevada drove down the field for 12 plays and 81 yards only to be denied in the red zone as linebacker Corey Paredes again punched the ball loose from quarterback Kaepernick, this time resulting in a touchback as the ball rolled out of the back of the end zone. Hawaii failed to capitalize going three and out and a great punt return for 44 yards by Nevada's Richard Matthews gave the Wolfpack first and 10 on Hawaii 17. A few plays later, quarterback Kaepernick squeaked one over the goal line and at the end of the third quarter, it was Hawaii 17, Nevada 7. The Wolfpack continued to fight back in the fourth and made it an exciting game. Hawaii opened up the fourth with a Scott Enos 31-yard field goal but on the ensuing kickoff, Nevada's Mike Ball both for 84 yards, taking it down to Hawaii's 14-yard line. Three plays later, quarterback Kaepernick found Vaito Ua out of the backfield, cutting the Warriors' lead to one score. Hawaii 20, Nevada 14. Hawaii immediately answered back with the strong receiving efforts of wide receiver Greg Salas, who finished the night with 11 catches and 151 yards. He was complimented by the running talents of Alex Green. He finished with 13 carries and 72 yards rushing, both players contributing to a successful drive, which was capped off by an 11-yard touchdown pass from Muniz to wide receiver Royce Pollard. Just over five minutes left in the game, it was Hawaii 27, Nevada 14. But the ferocious Wolfpack continued to stick together and fight their way back into the game. In hurry-up offense, quarterback Kaepernick connected with running back Mike Ball from 10 yards out and a touchdown, and with just over three minutes left in the game, it was the Warriors 27, the Wolfpack 21. Nevada then decided to onside kick and was successful. First and 10 Nevada, ball on their own 43. The home crowd cheered loud and proud as Hawaii's defense was called upon again to make a big play. And as in the last three games, senior safety Mana Silva came up with a huge interception, picking off quarterback Kaepernick. The Aloha Stadium went crazy as their Warriors sealed the victory at home and pulled off the big upset against the 19th ranked Wolfpack. The final score from Aloha Stadium, Hawaii 27, Nevada 21. Victory was sweet as Hawaii moved on to 5-2 overall, 3-0 in conference play. After the game, Big Wave Dave caught up with a handful of victorious Warriors, starting with the key players on the offense. As you guys saw Nevada coming back, was there any concern that uh, outcome of this game? We had no doubt in ourselves. Our defense is playing good. You know, they're a tough offense to stop. You know, we just kept believing and had confidence in ourselves, and we knew as an offense that we had to score. What's something that you think that is a key factor in keeping this team focused? The tempo at practice, the workouts in the summer, you know, all that kind of stuff is really what's paying off and is keeping us where we are. We've been playing with a little chip on our shoulder and we just want want some respect around here and you know that's all we want the way the offense is looking it seems like at any time during this game that offense has no concern about being able to come back tell us about the offense right now 
now. Um, we know we can score when we want to, you know, we didn't play as well as we did uh, as we wanted to play today offensively, but uh, we made enough plays to, to win the game, and, you know, we, we're excited about ourselves. We know what we can do, and, you know, we just got to go and execute every game. Tell us about the level uh, that you feel you guys are at now. Oh, we feel we had a pretty high level, but we still need to work on a little bit of stuff. You know, there's some stuff that we got to work on, we, could, we can improve on, but we're looking good right now. Offense is clicking, we're feeling good, we're playing good, we're all connecting, you know, and it's a great feeling about that and just show it on Saturdays and get, get big W's. Tell us about that touchdown you got. I was really focused, you know, I was poised and back into the game. You know, unfortunately, I had a chance, an opportunity to score earlier, and I didn't take advantage of that. So that series right there, I just really zoned in, focused, made my moves, made the cut, found low and got the ball, you know, just took it seriously. Big Wave also talked with members on the defense and kicker Scott Enos. Tell us about the defensive line and how you guys have gelled together to be a team that um, has been able to stop the running games. I mean, just to start off, we're a close bunch. Off the field, all, all of us are good friends. We just somewhere went camping together. It's pretty much we do anything for each other. So when we get on that field, no, football is easy. We're just out there playing, playing, doing what we love. So we get to do it with people. We, lo we, pretty much, we love each other. We do anything. So it's like we're all family out there. So it, the gelling and stuff comes easy. But I think the hype we brought, we had from spring going into summer about how good we were, didn't really show in the beginning of the season. We showed sparks of it here and there. And those sparks gave us hope, gave us something to drive for. And it was uh, the Fresno State game. Coach kind of called us out and uh, put us on the spot. A lot of us took it upon ourselves to rise to the occasion. You know, there's guys like Kaniella, Umu, Elliot, that, you know, just get people going. Haku, Haku's one of them, uh, man of few words, he just leads by his actions. I think once we started flying around, seeing each other do what we do, it just gives you that, um, you know how good you're going to be, and um, we're getting there slowly. There's always room for improvement, no matter what level you're playing at, Pop Warner, college, NFL, I know there's, there's always room for improvement, so um, the main thing is we don't get complacent and we keep improving. On in the last few weeks, can you and Jeremy, you guys just been snagging balls left and right. Tell us about tonight's game. Most emotional interception that I feel that I ever had in my life. The whole defense overall, you know, we're finding ways to get turnovers, finding ways to get turnovers and, and opportunities, to, you know, very opportunistic defense, you know, we just continue to get a great rush by the, the front seven is giving a great rush and, you know, putting in passive situations and we're just making the plays back there. It's about this season, you spent money on your point afters and on your field goals, your chances are going to be perfect. Tell us about the special teams unit you know, on the kicking game. I feel as though all six phases of the game, we're doing a really great job and I got to give credit to our offense for giving me the opportunities. I've had more PATs than I had all season last year already, so and we're only ha we're just halfway through the year, so it's fun. Last week at Fresno, playing in front of a rowdy crowd, and some of the big games this year, what keeps you calm and it's time for you to step up? I think it's just experience has really helped me, you know, kind of block out the atmosphere. Some of these atmospheres are great, like going into Fresno, they got some tough fans, but you know, as a kicker, no matter where you're at, you got to be able to block it all out, and I think just experience from last year has really, really helped me. Finally, Big Wave Dave asked several Warriors about how they felt on beating Fresno State and Nevada, both teams leaving the WAC to a quote-unquote bigger and better conference. We reflected on that a little bit about them leaving the conference and you know it gave us some greater incentive to, to understand that the WAC conference is a great conference you know, and we got a great team in, in ourselves and you know we got to stay humble. Um, those teams decided to leave the conference and leave us hanging um, but you know besides that fact uh, you know we just got to continue to, to improve as a whole team and hope the stars will line up perfectly and, and the WAC championship will be in our hands. It feels great you know I'm happy for the, for the my teammates because it really worked um, hard over these last you know few months and and giving them all the credit, you know, and, uh, and I just want to be a leader out there and helping as much as I can. And tonight was a really big win for us because even though we had a lot of penalties and, you know, obstacles that were in our way, we still overcome them, you know. So, you know, whenever you get knocked down, you got to get back up again. You got to have that will to get back up and keep pushing forward. So that's what pretty much, that's what we strive on because we never give up. That's where our mentality is and that's the, that's the way our, our team goes. You know, it feels good, you know, for them to leave the, the conference and kind of leave us in, in a weird situation and, you know, kind of think that you're good for everybody here and you know it's added motivation for us especially with the respect we got from the coaches and the media's polls with us. A well played game in all phases by Hawaii and a thrilling victory for the 50th state. The Warriors go back on the road next Saturday for a conference matchup against the Aggies of Utah State. Kickoff scheduled for 11 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time. Go Warriors! I'm Pu'ukani of Pipeline Paradise Radio reporting for IslandSportsMedia.com your ultimate island style sports magazine. Mahalo to Photographers Mike Sullivan and Glenn Yoza for capturing the sights and sounds at Aloha Stadium.